Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So this video, as you can see, we're starting out pretty crappy weather-wise and uh, we've got a few things to go over. And I think as the title says, we're gonna finish off that basement wall, get our gym kind of situated and our stuff protected. And then we'll go from there and see what else we can do. So as we're hitting like some really crazy 50, 60 degree days here, we've got some rain coming in. And I don't know if I've ever told you guys before, but I've told others when people ask me why I wanted to build a raised ranch. Well, a perfect example is what happens on this property. As Soon as the rains start to come, the ground is still frozen a few feet down. We really start getting massive rivers through here. It all collects right back there where the farm field is. And then everything is just absolutely soaked. So the less that I had to go down into the ground where eventually this water is just going to saturate down through and possibly flood the basement. Uh, I just thought that was just another cool reason why to do a raised ranch. And it just looks better, uh, looking like it's a bigger house and not like a little short uh, ranch style. One thing that we have to do for today is we are still getting overpower of water out of our vent stack for the basement sump pump. And again, it's just because that sump pump is so damn powerful. Uh, at almost like 7,000 gallons uh, an hour. So basically one of you guys suggested this uh, on the two inch vertical vent stack, we're gonna do a one way check valve, but it's gonna be put in the opposite direction. So that way the valve flap kind of is in the down position, but that way if water tries to shoot up and out and go out the valve stack, it's basically just gonna hit this shut but even as I'm looking at this down now, it's slightly cracked open. So there will always be air able to get down in there. But as long as the sump pump kicks on and kicks out and the uh, regens on the uh, uh, iron filter and the softener, when that kicks on, since it's more of a slow trickle, this should always remain open and it will give us that vent needed so all of the water can go out but we're really just trying to stop the water from going up the vent stack, going up into the attic, and kind of going everywhere. It's not bad at all, but it's still a concern. So for 15 bucks, just throw one of these on and be done with it. All right, headed into the house. It is 52 degrees in here. So clearly the temperature is coming through and we're getting uh, warm inside of the house. So that's freaking awesome. Uh, the crazy thing is the basement being all sealed up Plus with the insulation, uh, the thermostat is only set to 43 degrees Fahrenheit. So actually down in the basement, it's about 45. It's obviously gonna take a long time to heat that basement up, but with it all sealed up and covered, plus all of the insulation, it may get to 60 degrees tomorrow, but now the basement's gonna be the reverse up here. It's gonna be freezing down there, but it's actually gonna be kind of warm and comfortable up here when we're trying to work. So again, the game plan tonight, we're just trying to tap in to the vent line over in here. So that way we stop shooting all of that water up through there. And then it actually does make its way all the way up into the attic. So I'm just gonna tap in here right now. And man, this sump pump runs nonstop. Every five seconds it's kicking on. So we definitely, definitely, definitely have to get gutters on soon. We have to get more grading when the weather uh, heats up and we can actually start using some of this frozen dirt to do more grading. And I think once we're done with the grading and the uh, gutters are on, I think this thing actually hopefully will get dry one day and actually not even really get used. All right, I'm just gonna cut in here real quick with a Sawzall. Do not do this for your plumbing. This is obviously just a rubber clamp style. So uh, it doesn't have to be smooth on the outside of the inside edges, like when you're actually gluing fittings together. But again, with a clamp style and rubber clamps, uh, it doesn't matter. These uh, lines do not have to be perfectly straight or uh, perfectly smooth. Thank you. 
All right, hopefully that works. Hopefully that water goes up there, hits that valve, instantly stops, and then it can all just drain back down. That's different. Oh, it's running forever because the sump pump was unplugged. I thought it was actually just all shooting out there and it was taking longer, but man, that is a lot of water for being off for just only a minute or so. If this sump pump ever dies and we're not home, this basement's gonna get some water in it. That sounds different. Huh, no leaks, different sound. I wonder if that's because, wow, it's already on again. Huh, interesting. I don't know, I'm gonna have to scratch my head on that one. That's weird that just by replacing the vent tubing, it's, I don't know, it's like the floodgates opened up outside. This thing is literally turning on like every 30 seconds. And you can see it's filling, it empties. And then if you listen real closely, instead of a garden hose, it's like a waterfall coming down in there now. So before on other days, that water would just go into that pipe from outside of the French drain. It would just, again, come in like the size of a garden hose. That is literally like someone just constantly pouring a five gallon bucket. I don't know if I just didn't notice it before we did the vent stack or what, but it's when I was upstairs, I thought it only was turning on every like a minute or something. Now it's turning on like every 20 seconds. That's, ugh. like I said, that is scary that one day uh, this 100% could flood if that pump ever shuts down. So we're gonna have to look into some water sensors that can notify us if the water level's rising, if that pump dies, if the power ever goes out, and again, we just need to get moving on getting gutters on and start getting uh, some better grading going on. Ugh, I don't like that at all. But before my camera dies, real quick, the wall's up, it's going up. I got some studs up, ran out of a drywall. Right now we are just using the half inch. This is just so we keep dust out of the gym so we can get all of our stuff in there. When we actually start talking about soundproofing so we cannot hear what's going on in the utility room, we'll talk about what actually insulation we're gonna use and if we're gonna do like another layer of drywall or some sort of sound acoustic sealant and then drywall and get this wall out here a lot more soundproof or do the double layer on the inside of the uh, gym. It doesn't really matter. But uh, I did go ahead real quick and just use some pink insulation over in here. I don't think it really matters all that much if we're gonna double layer it. Plus this wall over here is pretty thick and uh, should help cut down on that. But I think by the time we're all done with this, we should really get some soundproofing going on so that we just really can't hear what's going on in the utility room. Not that it's crazy loud, unless again, everything is going through the regeneration cycle. All right, everybody, back in the basement, day later. Amazing how Ohio changes temperatures. 60 degrees, uh, kind of warm and sunny one day, and then pouring down rain the next. And now we're already back down into the 20s. Everything is a frozen solid sheet of ice. Uh, the house is back down to like 30 degrees, but we're still maintaining that 45 in the basement. So uh, there's not a lot we can do today. I just need to finish building this wall out over here, put in the door frame, and then we can go ahead and get more drywall. Then we can go ahead and maybe get two interior doors, at least for the utility. And over here in the gym, I don't know if they're going to have in stock what we actually want. We might have to order them, but uh, we can go ahead and maybe get some insulation too. So I can finish this spot over here. And again, we'll look into sound acoustic sealant and maybe put that up with new drywall that will go vertical instead of like right now we're going on the horizontal. So that way the lines aren't lining up to each other. And uh, again, that will help with sound transmission. But uh, it's not something that we absolutely, absolutely have to do. Again, we can change the regeneration times inside of the utility room so they're not going off and bothering us. We just need to pick that very specific time of day where it won't bother Aaron and I. But other than that, I, I think we'll be good to go. As for the rest of that rain uh, the other day, some pumps worked fine. It didn't flood or anything. But man, that still worries me that we're having such weird different sounds that the sump pump's making. I don't know what that tapping noise was. Um, 
out in the yard, everything seemed to be going okay. However, our discharge pipe was actually about halfway underwater. So that ditch is getting so much water, not only from us pumping out the foundation water, but everything coming down the hills on each side of that ditch, it was filling up. Um, this summer, we may have to clear that ditch out more with some rocks and uh, leaves and branches and everything that we threw in there, but we definitely don't want the water to not be able to go anywhere and be actually underwater and then start making its way back. We obviously want the pump to push the water out and then it actually gravity feed all the way out into the yard to where we're not worrying about it. But some fixes that we may have to do in the summer, but again, for at least right now, everything seems to be working. We don't have to have worry about water or water vapor shooting up into the attic until we actually get that pipe discharged out uh, through the gable end wall over there. But uh, for now, I guess it is what it is. At least it's working. So we'll worry about that when the time comes. All right, gym wall is done. And if you guys noticed, yes, I am still doing just the in uh, industrial strength caulking along that bottom plate and actually gluing the bottom plate down. I have not used any nails to go down into my concrete where I could potentially hit a radiant floor tube. Worst case scenario, if the wall moves, which I highly doubt it will, because each and every one of these studs, I've made them just a hair long. So I'm actually having to hammer them in. So they're pushing up on the top plate, they're pushing down on that bottom plate, and they're really crushing in there. So that will really help the wall basically not to move. But worst case scenario, if I see any movement, I can go ahead and maybe get just like a uh, inch and a half or two inch nail with that uh, CO2 or uh, uh, 22 caliber cartridge and we can shoot a couple in there just so that it goes into the concrete, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a half of an inch, and that will allow that wall to not kick either way. But so far, so good. None of these walls have moved. The glue is holding strong. Again, they're really pinched down in there, so uh, I'm pretty confident that nothing really is gonna happen. Now, on a positive note, I think I may have mentioned this before, another awesome thing about this gym wall is even though, again, this wall is not 100% structural, it is right underneath of a floor joist, and right on that floor joist is the exact center of the kitchen island. So the kitchen island granite is gonna weigh quite a bit, probably seven, eight, 900 pounds or something. Uh, depending what style we get. So it's nice that we'll have some of that weight being supported that uh, that floor joist definitely can't deflect now at all, not even a millimeter. And uh, with the cross bracing going out to that joist right there and the two other ones that go inside of there, I don't think we're really gonna have any flexion or movement now uh, when we put that granite uh, countertop on there. So that's freaking awesome. So this is really stiffening up the house doing all of this. So I've got two more pieces of lumber, so we're gonna have to get some more. I burned through too many uh, using them upstairs. But uh, down over here in the basement, we still got two more to do. We've got uh, this bedroom and bathroom wall to go this way. And we've got this one right here that's kind of only partially done on the bottom there. We still have to do the top plate all the way across and then frame that out and figure out if we actually do want to do a Jack and Jill bathroom. I was telling Aaron the way the layout may work, especially how we have to figure out how we're going to plumb uh, the shower, the toilet and sinks over to the septic over there. Um, maybe we don't want to do a Jack and Jill bathroom because if we put a door over there, 
we could actually run the plumbing through the wall instead of going up into the floor joist and over and dropping down. We could actually run it maybe at like my knee level, which is where the septic is over there in that corner. So we wouldn't have to um, do that much lift in our sewer there and then bring it over there. We could only do it again like knee high and bring it over through there. So I don't know. We'll, we'll decide if we actually are going to do a Jack and Jill bathroom. Uh, or if we just want to have both of these bedrooms have to come out of here and go into that one, into the bathroom, and come out of that bedroom over there and go into the bathroom. So just something I thought out. It might make, the again, the layout a little bit easier, but uh, we'll see what we decide. So not much else to do tonight. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's not going to be raining tomorrow. I can get my bed sweeped out so we can put some drywall in there and not have to worry about water or snow contaminating like the first two pieces. Uh, we'll see if we can get a door again. I don't know if we're going to get the exact kind that we want with the look. Um, and then we'll see how many rolls of insulation we can pick up. I did only use, again, this R19 over here. Uh, the R19, some of them, somebody's going to say, you know, an R19 is supposed to be for a five and a half inch cavity. But uh, this stuff is so compressible and, and movable that it's not even bowing or hurting this half inch drywall. So I think with an R19, you pack it in maybe a little bit tighter instead of like an R13 that's made for a two, and, two by four wall. And uh, I don't know, the, the denser the fiberglass uh, compresses, maybe that will cut down on the sound transmission. And even when we're standing here right now, the regen's actually going on. It's not that loud. Granted, I think this is only the regen on the softener, the iron regen is the one that's really, really loud. So that's not that bad standing right here and I can barely hear it. So by the time we get again, more insulation in this cavity, put on this drywall piece right here, we, need, we may not even be able to hear the regen, at least on the water softener. We'll just have to wait and see what how loud the iron softener regen actually gets. So I'm gonna pack it up here. Wish me luck tomorrow that we can actually go get material and the weather will cooperate. That's one bad thing about having a truck and not a van. A van, you can at least pack everything in and keep it all nice and dry till you get to your job site but uh, uh fingers crossed we get it done and hopefully we'll be able to finish out this wall tomorrow and uh we can get a video posted up for you guys this week hey everybody good morning so did not sleep last night and i normally don't at least on my days off um went to the store early this morning we got some more drywall, we got some insulation. Hopefully we have enough to finish out the vault wall today also. Run the electrical. I'm gonna need your help to tell me where you want stuff, especially in the gym. Um, we need to know, like, first off, there's no lights in the gym. So once that uh, wall uh, gets finished off, it'll be completely pitch black in there. So we gotta run the electrical for some lights. You need to tell me how many you want, when, where, for example, in the kitchen, we've only got like four pot lights and they're spaced out like over 10 feet apart each way. Uh, and the gym is only like 10 foot wide. So I think we can put them more closer together and more along there. And then where a TV is gonna go. In the uh, gym? Yeah, um, like up on the wall, like in a corner. So we need an outlet up in there. Most times I see people like hang industrial fans in a corner too, so they blow down. Uh, so we'll need an outlet for like that too. Um, it's gonna be the hottest gym ever. If the if it's a day when the floor is really kicking and heating up, it's gonna be the hottest sauna gym. I get well, it'll be like sauna yoga, I guess. You'll get a hell Hot of a yoga, workout. Yeah. yeah, but we're definitely gonna have to put down rubber mats all throughout there so they can easily be cleaned and wiped. Um, did not have doors at the store. Nothing that we want. Even the solid doors that they call solid, like oak and stuff. It's literally just like a 16th of an inch of like oak veneer over top of basically OSB. So inch and a half core of just press board um, instead of actually like solid core that we have uh, in the house going. So, well, and I, you wouldn't even want those anyway. The like six, six pocket. Yeah. And it's not ideal. Yeah. So we'll have to order something, but at least they're standard sizes. So they're not an arm and a leg. Uh, as opposed to the eight foot doors that are upstairs that I don't even know how much those cost. I know that I don't it's remember. about- It's been so long since you ordered them. I want to say I spent like 7,000 or something on seven doors. So that's, I don't know. I'd have to check that price, <laughs> but it may be more than that actually. So it is at least a thousand a door maybe. 
But uh, we also got two more sheets of the uh, 5 8 particle board so we can finish out the utility room also. And then that little uh, island that we have in the master bedroom closet, we got to finish out the back too and then make some doors and then eventually a piece of granite will go over top of that. So uh, we'll get all this stuff in the house real quick. We'll go over the layouts and then we'll finish out this video with hopefully the gym will be done. All right, drywall done. That wall is done. Now we just need to get a door. Maybe we'll put up a tarp or something. That way we keep all the dust out. But before we move all the stuff into there, we gotta get the lights done. So that way, again, we're not dropping dust on everything. So I think we're gonna either power from that light switch over there, or if there's enough room in this light switch on uh, this side over here, which now you can tell it's completely dark in here and we can't see anything. There we go. So if we have enough room in this box over here, we can tap into this light switch for a power source and then come on through and just start throwing a whole bunch of lights in here. So uh, let me measure out, see how many we actually need. I'm guessing, again, at least maybe eight lights in here. Just something really, really powerful. And then uh, we should be good to go over here. And since this door is gonna be opening towards that wall over here, we just need to hang a switch box over here and then uh, we'll have everything powered up. So let's run through where at least we're gonna do the lights and then we'll plan out the outlets and stuff where Aaron uh, wants to put them. All right, so I just wired in off of this switch and the gym is 10.3 by 27.3. So I've got my wire ready to go up. We're kind of tied in here. So at 10.3, we would want to split the room into thirds. That would make sense. And then however many over 27 foot, three inches, how many do we need? We either need to do like six or eight I would imagine so how many probably six so if we do six total <laughs> one third of ten three is roughly 41 inches so 41 inches from here over and then from that wall over and then it's about every 46 inches and in some would be one running down so I don't think you can really do eight because mm -hmm. they'd be very cramped together so all right, we'll do 40, roughly like 46 and a half going down, 41 inches going across. So even six, I think that's going to be a lot of light. So I don't know. Let's wire one up over here at that 41 and 46 and a half, roughly. We'll install it, turn it on, and then we'll just start daisy chaining down. And then, or actually, no, we have to start down there. Ah, eh, crap. Hang tight. We'll get them all in. All right. Just got the first one wired up, just got the switch connected, and uh, we got power. Thank God, because my head is killing me from that uh, spotlight. So I'll get a piece of drywall cut real quick, hang that up kind of roughly where it's supposed to go, and then we'll just trek on down, whatever I said, 46 inches, 47 inches, whatever. Uh, trek on down, run another wire, jumper it in, and then we'll do that uh, three times down this way, and then we'll up over to this side and then we'll do three down this way and then hopefully we should be done and uh i'm starting to feel the tiredness kick in now so it's probably one two in the afternoon and i've been up since 5 a.m with like no sleep so quickly daisy chain these over get them done and then we'll be done for the day
Hopefully this works because I don't have any more in me. I got five out of 12 done. Math was probably a little off there. I was saying six to eight as a total. <laughs> and now we're getting six just on one run. So to do an additional six on the other side, it actually won't be a bad thing. I mean, it is a gym. We do want it lit up. Uh, if we put mirrors down here, obviously you don't want bad shadows. And uh, because we're 48 inches over on this side, you can see like more darker area on this side as you do on this side. So 12 lights in here total is not the end of the world. Again, it's a gym, might as well make it look good. But uh, I got one more to do on this row before I jump over. And then we gotta go back down and do six more, but I just do not have the energy. So I will come back out here tonight or whenever I wake up next, uh, knock out these additional ones. And uh, I may actually run out of light bulbs, so I may have to go get a few more. But uh, yeah, looking good. That is definitely a hell of a lot of light for this little space down here. Again, we got about 10 foot three by about 27 three. Should be plenty of room and a nice little workout area. So uh, I'll wrap this one up here for today and uh, I'll see you guys back uh, later tonight or the next day whenever I get it done. All right, everybody, time to wrap this one up here. Uh, had a little bit of sleep and uh, I ran out of lights. So uh, I only had eight total, which the last time I was at the store, I bought them all out. So that's all that they had there. So we need, uh, what, four more to go. And then again, we'll have 12 down in here total instead of the six or eight they were originally thought. But it's not that bad. I mean, you can see in this corner right here, uh, main beam over, those four up in there. It's not overly bright, but bright enough that everything is uh, nicely lit up in my opinion. So to do four more running down this side, I think we'll be good. So I'm just gonna pre-drill all my holes. So we got wires that can come this way. And then uh, again, we'll just have to go buy more, but uh, I'm gonna again wrap this one up here. I think we got everything good. I think the gym is gonna be nice and lit up and it's gonna be cozy in here. And then uh, at a later time, I'll try to figure out what the wiring I'm gonna do over here so that we can get all the uh, outlets done too because we have to install outlets all the way around that bottom. We need to do outlets on this side of the wall of the basement and we need to do outlets inside of the gym. And uh, maybe in the gym I can get away with not doing like the actual every 12 feet because it's not really like an occupied living space, but I don't know. Uh, we'll try and keep it close so the county doesn't yell at us. But uh, yeah, so a little bit more uh, wiring and stuff. We'll get the insulation up, then we'll get drywall on that wall. And then that's just one more thing to do. And then again, once I hang those lights up in there, we'll get all of our storage back in there, close that off a little bit, and uh, I think we'll be good. So hang tight. Uh, we'll have some more videos coming up here, hopefully of uh, some other stuff that we figure out. Uh, if you like the video, like the progression, hit that thumbs up, please. It always helps our channel out. Subscribe if you're not already, and uh, turn the bell on so you get notified uh, when we post a new video. And if you guys want to personal message us, hit us up on Neck of the Woods 2020 on Instagram, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.